Okay, so that's pretty cool, isn't it? I'm sure you've recognized some style in which perhaps you've heard these chords utilized in and maybe some music that even sounds familiar with the, the tune I've come up with here. It kind of reminds you a lot of a lot of the early police stuff, if you were a big fan of the police, um, or maybe the pretenders. Um, a lot of British uh, new wave rock and pop rock that came out of uh, England and America in the 80s and through the 90s had these kinds of chords. And they essentially have become part of our lexicon of chords now that we play. But you can hear how they can sound really modern and, and open at the same time without sounding so, you know, so square sounding with the, with the triad fully addressed, right? It's a little bit more open sounding. And that's what I like about them, okay? Now, let's take a look at the C section there because you'll notice that I got more melodic with my chords there. I started to do something with them. I took the C add nine chord. And I just started to play a little bit more of a, of a rhythm inside of the progression, right? And I thought that would be a good place to do it on the change of the B section. So watch what I was doing there. I was just going three, four, one. Now you'll notice that I'm hardly playing a move here because you can see the C add nine here to the G add nine. The fingers are very close, closely related here. Here's C add nine and here's G add nine. The D is common to both chords. Okay, but the, the nine, this is the ninth in the C chord and the A is the ninth in the G chord. Okay. Um, you'll hear that I'm also using a lot of chorus on my guitar, so it has a kind of a typical police sound, too. I kind of like that. But without the chorus, it would sound like this. Okay. But it's really, it's really nice on a guitar like this because it's got that bright, jangly sound that really works well. Um, you'll also notice on the second part of my progression here, I, I called a chord different, uh, something different than we're used to seeing. And I, I called it G, but I put it over B. What does G over B mean? Well, that just simply means that it's going to be a G chord. Okay? But instead of having G as the lowest tone, it's going to have the third of the chord in the bass instead of the root in the bass, okay? So the bass that I've recorded here is playing B. So even if I play this G, the bass is going to be an octave below playing the B, and it's going to sound like it's G over B. But you can see that all you'd have to do is to make a G over B happen is simply just not play the root on the bottom, but just play the third on the bottom. There's the G, here's G over B. This is the root, or this is the third, rather, sorry. And here's G. So here's G, and here's G over B. There's other ways to play it too. Okay, but either one is acceptable. But remember, the bass player ultimately decides how it sounds, so they're playing or this. That's the way it's going to be perceived uh, from the sound in the band. Okay? So let's go back to it again and let you guys play along. Okay. Uh, give it a good powerful strum at the beginning. And also remember you can play this one. Right? For the A add nine. And D add nine, we could do this one. Or this one. Um, so either one. Okay? Because the both of these voicings are give you the third in the chord. Where this chord right here takes the third out, but it keeps the nine in as well as this one. Takes the third out and keeps the nine in. Okay, here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Add my chorus this time. Here comes the 
the C section. B section, sorry. Very simple what I'm playing right now in terms of the voicings that I'm using. But you can hear, and you can probably even imagine, stuff like this is very popular and it's very effective in a lot of musical situations because it allows a lot of space for the singer, it allows a lot of space for melody on top, and it's, it allows the music a place to build up to. So by playing something simple like this in the top of our progression, the music naturally has a place to go that gets more exciting as you as you add rhythm to it and as you add more harmonic movement. So we're going to do this in other kinds of progressions too with other types of voicings besides open string chords, but I just wanted to show you that today because I thought that was really a fun way to show you how the chords fit together with add nine chords, okay? Um, so let's take a moment. I'm going to show you one more thing. Hang on a second. Okay, so we've been discussing add nine chords, okay? But you might have noticed in that last example, I started to do other things within the voicing or within the chord that was incorporating other notes. Now, how do we explain those notes, okay? Well, let's talk about those notes here. Remember, this is the ninth right here in the A chord. Okay, but remember, all the notes in the key of A in this case, are available to play within the chord or within the key. And what I simply did at some point was I added other notes in the key in addition to the chord, right? So you can take this A chord, and I like to do this a lot, and add the fourth degree of the scale, right? In this case, it's right here. You could also call it the, the 11 if you want, uh, because it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 right there um, and incorporate it into the chord into a little melody so what you might even do is use that with the nine as well so you can play right that's kind of a nice little melody inside the chord now You probably heard stuff like that on the Beatles records all over the place. There's a lot of early British invasion stuff. And it works really well on a lot of the other chords I was showing you. On the D chord, it would be no harder than to take the D and open it up to the ninth right here, but bring it back into the third and add the fourth degree or the eleventh that, right? So then you got things like this. And then back to the A. Okay, so you're, the whole time you're holding these notes down, you're using your 
second and third fingers, or rather your third and fourth fingers to get these other notes. And you're trying to make sure that this is ringing real clearly and the E string's ringing clearly so you can get those notes uh, blending in. And even on the C chord, check this out. Here's the C chord. Okay. Remember that we had the ninth here. Okay, but here's another way to add the ninth and incorporate uh, some of the hammer-on stuff that we're talking about. I can, I can use the ninth here below. Right, instead of having in this octave, I have it here. It's the same note as D. And that will allow me to do this. the G chord. I might have the G like this and I'll hammer on to the to the ninth this way. I'll here's the G root and here's the ninth. So that will allow me melodies inside of this chord. I can go you can do inside of these chords. It, it makes, makes melody happen inside of a chord. Okay, so I'm going to experiment with some of that stuff now um, in my next performance and you'll, you'll hear how that will really dress up the chords. Okay, so here we go. Back to our progression. Let's have some fun with this. One, two, one, two, three, four. had fun in this lesson and you learned some stuff. This has been a lot of fun teaching. And I want you to experiment with this stuff in your own music, okay? All right. I'll see you next lesson, okay? Have a good time. Till later. Dave Hill signing out.